The community of Owasso, as well as Oklahoma lawmakers, are remembering a doctor who drowned on Ulaga Lake. Dr. Dale Irby was trying to retrieve his boat late yesterday when he went under and never resurfaced. 2 News Oklahoma reporter Jeanette Casada tells us how he is being remembered today. Dr. Derby was a husband, father, doctor, and at one point an Oklahoma lawmaker representing Tulsa and Rogers counties. I couldn't believe it um, just because I'd sat down and talked with Dr. Derby literally four hours before. An entire community is at a loss for words after learning a renowned Owasso doctor drowned at Ulaga Lake Tuesday afternoon. It appears that uh, the victim um, and, his, and his wife were unloading a boat at a boat ramp and the, uh, the vessel wouldn't start. So the vessel, the wind was blowing a little bit and the vessel um, came separated from the trailer and it, it wouldn't start. So it started drifting across the lake away from the boat ramp. OHP says the 72 year old was attempting to swim to his disabled boat when he went under and never resurfaced. OHP says Northwest Fire crew members recovered his body just hours later. Dr. Derby was truly a great man. Um, I just, I'm, you know, no, no words can um, express how truly sorry I am for what's happened. Derby was one of the founders of the Bailey Medical Center in Owasso, where he worked as a medical director for the anesthesiology program. Um, he was highly respected. Um, you know, there, there's some staff members at the hospital that have been there since day one alongside with him for 15 years. So he will be greatly missed. But his legacy goes far beyond the medical community. Derby served in a state house for District 74 from 2016 to 2018. House Speaker Charles McCall and other representatives extended their condolences to his family. McCall describing him as a man of honesty, character and integrity. The current representative for District 74, Mark Van Curen, saying in part, he was a great champion of many causes of our city and the state of Oklahoma. He is a friend to many, an outstanding physician and a dedicated family man, whether it was to his country, his patients or his church. Dr. Derby dedicated his life to serving others. Our prayers and deepest condolences go out to his family. We loved him. Um, we love his family. And just anything we can do for them, we would be happy to. Coming up at 6, I'll tell you how he touched the lives of those he served. In Rogers County, Jeanette Quesada, Tunis, Oklahoma. Jeanette, thank you. New at 5, a jury is recommending more than $1.6 million in damages be awarded to the family of a teenager killed in a crash on Avery Drive. 18-year-old Kobe Tyner died back in 2017 when he crashed a motorcycle into an oncoming car. Tyner's family says he was swerving to miss a Tulsa County deputy who'd made a U-turn to go after a different motorcyclist for speeding. A court hearing to finalize that judgment is set for October. With President Biden sticking to his August 13th deadline to pull out of Afghanistan, the State Department and U.S. military are working around the clock to get Americans out. Meanwhile, two members of Congress are facing criticism for using an unauthorized visit to Kabul to see for themselves how the evacuation mission is proceeding. Alice Barr has the latest for us from Washington. With only six days left until all U.S. troops are set to leave Afghanistan, the military and State Department are racing to get Americans and allies to safety. In an anxiously awaited update today, the Secretary of State saying there may be as many as 1,500 Americans still actively seeking to leave. We're aggressively reaching out to them multiple times a day through multiple channels of communication, phone, email, text messaging. President Biden is sticking to his August 31st deadline, but also ordering contingency plans in case troops have to stay longer. There is no deadline on our work to help any remaining American citizens who decide they want to leave to do so, along with the many Afghans who have stood by us over these many years. It seems clear there won't be time to get out all the Afghan translators and others who served alongside U.S. forces. This is a profound betrayal. Uh, the president and his administration needs to understand that veterans are never going to forgive them for this. Many veterans trying to help their Afghan colleagues in peril a world away. He's been beaten. His wife has been beaten in front of their kids by the Taliban. Two U.S. House members, one Republican, one Democrat, both veterans who secretly traveled to Kabul saying Washington should be ashamed of the chaos. But they're facing their own backlash for the unauthorized trip. How many Afghan women and children? We're not able to be evacuated yesterday because we had to pull Marines off the line 
or, or out of rest uh, to provide security for VIP. The around the clock evacuation mission continues with the danger only increasing as the deadline approaches. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Now, your two news Oklahoma first forecast sponsored by Executive Homes. Another hot day here in East Oklahoma, but we are tracking some potential changes in the extended. But right now, as we look outside, we have mostly fair skies, a hot afternoon across the region, back to near 100 degrees. Currently in Tulsa, we're sitting at 98 degrees this afternoon. We are seeing more potential for us at least another day, 100 degree heat, and then we might say goodbye to it for the rest of the month. We are tracking our next chance for rain. There could be a huge tropical system down the Gulf, and that could have an impact on our weather in the extended. I'm going to walk you through that and the potential even for a hurricane to impact the Gulf. I'll detail where that might make landfall and where that might develop. Coming your way here in just a few minutes. Mike, thank you. Still ahead, accountability for Afghanistan. What could come from the growing calls for an investigation into what went wrong? After a Dewey family's upstairs AC broke down, temperatures in their kids' bedrooms soared into the 90s, and they say their home warranty company let them down, telling them to deal with it themselves. I fought with them and I fought with them. I'm 2 News Oklahoma problem solver Pete Knudsen. Coming up at 6, find out what steps the warranty company finally took after the problem solvers got involved. Pete, thank you. Well, the country is less than a week away from America's planned complete withdrawal from Afghanistan. And now comes the finger pointing and calls for investigations into the how, you, how the United States misjudged the speed at which the Taliban could take over the country. Our Joe St. George shows how we might soon be hearing talk of investigations and commissions to look at how our government misjudged what would happen in that country. We are currently on a pace to finish by August the 31st. President Biden continues to defend the decision to withdraw all American troops from Afghanistan by August 31st. As of Wednesday morning, 82,000 plus people have been evacuated from Kabul over the last week and a half. But while President Biden remains confident in the rescue effort going on in Afghanistan, the American people are becoming more skeptical. For the first time in his presidency, more Americans disapprove of the president than approve of him. That's according to Real Clear Politics polling average, which calculates all the polling that's being conducted on the president. It's not just one individual poll. It's not just polls expressing skepticism. Members of Congress are expressing skepticism as well, which is why efforts to hold the Biden administration accountable for what's happened in Afghanistan will begin soon. We view this, as I said during the hearing, as the, the beginning of vigorous oversight of what went wrong uh, in uh, our departure from Afghanistan. That was Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff, a Biden ally who leads the House Intelligence Committee earlier this week. Meanwhile, Chairman Gregory Meeks, another Democrat who leads the House Foreign Affairs Committee, has already said he wants the Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and Secretary of State Antony Blinken to testify soon in a public hearing. It is imperative that the administration provide the American people and Congress transparency about its Afghanistan strategy, he wrote in a letter. Meanwhile, some Republicans are vowing a lengthy investigation if they take back control of the House next year, especially since billions of American taxpayer dollars were spent training Afghan troops to fight the Taliban. Republican Congresswoman Claudia Tenney of New York tweeting, is it too soon for us to start discussing an Afghanistan select committee? The reality is while President Biden will not be testifying under oath because of the laws that stop him from doing so, his top advisors will Will be soon. Congress's scrutiny of President Biden's orders in Afghanistan could begin this fall and potentially last year's. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Now, your two news Oklahoma weather, sponsored by Executive Homes. All right, you're looking at HD satellite to cross, uh, of course, northern portions of South America into the Caribbean, and we are tracking a disturbance that eventually could become a major tropical system. Now, this is still ways away, but let me show you our future track radar as we take this into the future. Eventually, we'll move into southern uh, portions of the Gulf and potentially into the Gulf Coast states over the next couple of days. This is into the future. So this is taking that system now and running this all the way towards Sunday and Monday of next week where it is showing the potential for a landfalling hurricane.